Welcome to the Module 6 Lecture. We're going to talk about Windows devices. Our objectives are going to be Windows device drivers, Windows device driver installation, view device driver defaults and details, signed versus unsigned device drivers, introduction to the Windows registry, Windows registry structure, and Windows registry data types. We're also going to talk about importing and exporting registry data and Windows 64-bit and 32-bit registry differences. All hardware installed on a Windows-based system has a device driver. Drivers are used to handle the low-level communication tasks between the operating system and hardware components. So if you have anything plugged into your computer, whether it's on the motherboard or a USB port, it all has to have a driver. When you install a piece of hardware on the Windows PC, you tell the operating system about the device driver it uses. Every subsequent time it boots, the driver automatically loads and runs as part of the operating system. So that way you don't have to reinstall the drivers over and over. After you install or connect a new hardware device, you must set up that device so that it is available for use. Most new devices today are plug and play compatible meaning the device will communicate with the operating system to identify itself. When Windows 2012 receives the plug-and-play identification, it will search its vast device driver database to see if a valid driver exists for the device. If a driver exists, the driver is installed and the device is ready for use. So pretty simple. You plug it in. If it finds a driver for it, it goes ahead and starts using it. If it doesn't, it'll prompt you for the driver and then you can install it manually. So when you do plug that device in, you are going to see a little pop-up happen saying it found new hardware in the bottom right hand corner. And then when it's all done installing the driver, it'll tell you it's ready for use. You can view devices and device driver details using the device manager tool. To open up the device manager tool, you go to the control panel, system icon, and then select the device manager node. After you access the device manager, you can manipulate each individual device shown by selecting it and right clicking. From the menu, you can display the properties, uninstall, disable, enable, update drivers, or scan for hardware changes. Note that the device list shows warning symbols if there are any problems with the device. So if you see a white arrow pointing downward, it indicates the device has been disabled. If you see a yellow warning, it indicates a problem with the device, such as a driver issue. So here's an example of the white arrow. If you see that, it's been disabled. You can right-click on it and choose to enable it at that point. Over here, we may see a yellow question mark that kind of thing, that means that it's usually a driver issue. Windows Server 2012 ex includes an extensive library of device drivers. These drivers are maintained in the file repository called the Driver Store. Each device driver package has an associated setup information file or an INF file. The file identifies any source files used by the device driver. Every driver installed on the system has a source file called a dot with a dot sys sys extension. These files are located in system root, which is typically your C drive, syst uh, then Windows, then system 32, then drivers. So that's where you're going to find all the drivers. Any driver configuration is stored in the registry. So if the files are stored here, but the registry contains information about how to use those drivers. There are a couple of different ways a driver can be installed. One is with a signed device driver, and that is the Microsoft recommend, recommended type of drivers. They are validated by the Microsoft Windows Hardware Quality Lab, so they're actually tested out to make sure they can work with your operating system and your hardware and should not cause your server to crash. doesn't mean it won't, it just means it should not cause it to crash. And it's verified with a digital signature to exclude tampering. Unsigned drivers are not validated by Microsoft, so they're more likely to cause problems with the operating system freezing or crashing. You can still use them, but they should be monitored for problems, and they could be tampered with. So why would a company not get their drivers signed by Microsoft? Well, it's a cost issue many times. 
because Microsoft will charge you, will charge that company to have their devices tested and signed. So let's go ahead and get into the device manager. We can go to control panel and from here we can click on system and then from here we can click on device manager. So we're in the device manager and we can see that we've got a device which has been disabled. If we want to enable that device, just right click, choose enable. Now it's enabled. We can also do some other things such as we can update the driver software. We can either search automatically where it will go on the internet if it needs to, or we can browse to the location and we can tell it where to look. It'll also search for subfolders as well or we can pick from a list of device drivers, this kind of thing you will rarely need to use. If we right click again, we can also choose to uninstall the device. Now you'd wanna do, do this if you think that there's a corruption with the driver. If you uninstall it, when you reboot the computer, it will reinstall it automatically, hopefully with a fresh driver that is not gonna cause problems. You can also scan for hardware changes. You can do this at the, at the root as well, to scan for hardware changes to see if there's been any new devices that have been added since the last time you were in it. You can also click on add legacy hardware. This would be older devices that are not plug and play that you need to have a driver for. All right, so if we click on file, we can choose options. We can choose to do a disk cleanup on the files we're not using, the setup files we're not using anymore for device drivers. We can also do the same kind of things I just showed you earlier. And you can choose different views. By default, you're going to choose the, uh, choose the devices by type. But if you want to, you can change to devices by connection. Now we can see a different view of how things are plugged in to the device manager. We can choose resources by type. This shows you the memory that it's using, that the different devices are using. Resources by connection also shows you memory information. You can see, for instance, my graphics adapter is being used at this particular memory address. Let's go back to devices by type for a second, our traditional view, and click on show hidden devices. When we show hidden devices, we show devices that not necessarily are being uh, seen by default, but you can choose to see them and manipulate them if you open up the hidden devices. A lot of times this will happen in the area of ports, such as the printer port. We don't actually have a printer port on this, so it might still show up under hidden devices, but it may not show up under uh, devices that are not hidden. So if we uncheck that, that'll go away. We can also customize the view. We can choose what to add in. And if we like that, we can just go ahead and click OK. All right, so that is the device manager on Windows Server 2012. Let's talk about the Windows registry. If you make any changes to the Windows registry, you can cause Windows to become unstable or not boot or have other problems. So if you're going to make any changes, you're going to want to back up your registry. The Windows registry is the central repository for configuration information in Microsoft Windows. Applications, system components, device drivers, and the operating system all use the registry. By comparison, a Linux box, a Linux operating system, doesn't use a registry. It uses a bunch of text files. Well, Microsoft took that one step further, took all those text files and put them into a registry, which is called a hive. So if there anything goes wrong with that hive, then you can have all kinds of problems. With a lot of information being read and written to the registry, an administrator needs to understand the, what's in the registry. So you've got the structure, how the registry is used, how data is stored in the registry, and how to make changes if necessary. So every registry key is going to have a different uh, types of information on how to make changes to them. The registry is written as a binary database with information organized in a hierarchy. This hierarchy is very similar to what is used in the Windows file system. However, it can be misleading as there is no direct folder file system connection to the registry. The registry is made up of three different elements, hive keys, keys, and values. 
The root keys are at the top of the registry hierarchy and form the primary branches of the registry information, usually prefixed with H key. Keys are hier hierarchy containers that exist below the root keys, which contain the secondary branches of registry information. Values are the lowest level of registry hierarchy, which stores the actual data. Value keys are comprised of three parts, the name, the descriptor of the key, the data type, how will the data be stored, and the value, the stored data. There are two different sets of hive keys, physical keys and logical keys, and this is something you will need to remember. The physical keys are the H key local machine and the hive and the and also the users, and the logical keys are the H key current config, classes root, and current user. So under the logical keys, you have the current config connected to H key local machine, software classes, H key current user, software classes, that kind of thing. Under the classes root, you have the H key local machine system current control set pro hardware profiles. And under the current user, you have where the user ID is the security identifier for the current user. If that ID gets separated from the user name, then you can have all kinds of problems with that user logging on. Both of the physical hive keys have physical files they load from. These are normally located under the users and then the username or the and also the system root system 32 and config so the user keys are located here and the system keys are located here we're mostly using 64-bit operating systems nowadays but uh, the you will see that a lot of your applications are still running 32-bit so on a 64-bit system the Windows registry is a is a little bit different than the 32-bit one 32-bit and 64-bit entries are divided into their respective keys in different areas of the registry. Most keys are duplicated in both, so you're going to see the same key twice, one in the 32-bit area and one in the 64-bit area. 64-bit keys are located in the standard locations. 32-bit keys are located under the WOW redirector node HKLM software WOW 6432 node. Now, WOW stands for Windows on Windows. The Windows stores data in multiple formats. Each are referred to as a data type. You've got the reg binary, which is the raw binary data without any formatting or parsing. You've got the reg D word, which is binary data in which 32-bit integer values are stored as four byte hexadecimal values. And you've got the reg Q word. Now we're not gonna get too deep into these, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move on, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware of them. Same thing with the reg SZ expand SZ and the multi SC. These are various different values that will allow you to make changes to how the drivers are used. You can import or export registry data by highlighting a root key or a standard key and choosing import or export from the file menu. Files are saved with the dot reg extension. So let's take a look at that. So in order to get into the registry, we can just go from anywhere and just type reg edit registry pops up and we can see the various different keys so you see local machine and H key H key users the two physical keys and you see, also see these logical keys as well from here the most edited keys are going to be under H key local machine hive key local machine is what that stands for and then from here, you'll, you're going to click on system sometimes. You'll click on hardware, security, or software sometimes. So if you click on system, the first thing you're going to want to click on is most likely uh, current control set. And then from there, you can click on services, policies, whatever it is that the editing is required uh, tells you where to go. So if you wanted to back up the registry, uh, you can do it at the root level. Right click, uh, and you can uh, export. And that exports the entire registry, which could be hundreds of megabytes. If you want to go with a particular key, like you will with our lab, then you find the key, the path to the key that it asks you to, and you right click and you choose export. And you type in the name that it tells you to add, and then it'll export it to wherever it is you want. That reg key then, 
uh, can be edited or it can be opened up or it can be re-imported just by double clicking on the file. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, right click and we'll choose export and we'll just call it the name of the key that it is. It is the hardware profile. So we'll say HW profiles. Go to the desktop, save, then we'll minimize all these different programs and we'll see the reg file. Now if you double click on it, basically all you're doing is you're re-importing it back in. If you right click on it and choose edit, it opens it up in a text file and from here you can copy all of your information and paste it into your lab. So we'll, right, we'll click edit, we'll choose select all, choose edit and copy and then we'll paste it into our lab. This isn't necessarily the correct key that the lab asked for but this is basically how you would do it. So I'll go back into our registry and then we're going to see that there's all these sub keys underneath. And inside there are these different types of information. And you'll see the type of reg SC, reg D, where these are all the things that we talked about during the slides. And this shows different types of information. So for instance, last boot shutdown shows zero. If I change that to one, then it won't show that option during the boot up. So you're going to see these types of keys all through the registry. There's going to be thousands of them. You can also search for a key by choosing edit, find, and then type in the search term and it'll find every instance of that down the list. So in conclusion, we talked about device drivers, installing device drivers, defaults and details, signed versus unsigned drivers, introduction to the registry, Windows registry structure, Windows registry data type, how to import and export registry data, and Windows 64-bit and 32-bit registry differences.